Tag A push, student, Suhas Tadapudi, period first, uh, interview. Uh, this part of the interview will be just for context reasons, to provide the classroom and the teacher with who you are, your background information, before we delve into the actual um, interview. Uh, what is your name? Name is Raj Kalavachala. And uh, your date of birth? It's uh, May 1975. Okay. And your place of birth? India. And what is your ethnicity? I'm Asian Indian. And where were your parents, brothers, and sisters born? Include their names, please. Sure. My dad, dad's name is Krishna. My mother's name is Dharahasini. My mother, uh, sister's name is Geeta. They were all born in India. Okay. And your children? Yes, I have two sons, and uh, both were born in the, here in the U.S., in Dallas. Okay. Uh, where, where all have you lived? You mean uh, countries or? Countries. Uh, first 24 years of my life was in India, and for the last 14 years I've been here in the U.S. Alright, um, the next few questions will be from uh, discussing your birth to adolescence. Sure. Uh, where did you live as a child? As a child, I lived, um, of course, in India. Okay. Yeah. And when you were growing up, what was the role of boys and girls in the family? Were there any coming of age ceremonies or significant events? Um, there is one event that um, uh, was supposed to have happened. Uh, it's not really a coming of age. You know, you could say in a way it is a coming of age. <coughs> ceremony uh, never had that happen in my childhood when it is supposed to happen I have you know these days nobody does it anymore it's called uh, Urugu yeah it's okay. a ceremony yeah so I had that happen just before marriage around 14 to 16 years old right? it's typically but I had that happen when I was 24 20 no let me really think it's uh, I had that happen when I was 22 years of age okay, okay. yeah which is not the age that it's supposed to happen but it's just a okay. you know kind of a ceremony that has to happen so, so we just did it and the role of boys and girls in the family? Role of boys and girls in what context? I mean, um, like chores and stuff like that. I would, yeah, I would assume so. Yes. Nothing like that. We really didn't have uh, much distinction like that. You know, we did pretty much what we needed to do to, you know, get our weekly or daily um, allowance and stuff like that. But nothing really uh, distinct. Okay. Uh, when you were in junior high school, so mm -hmm. grade six or nine, mm -hmm. uh, describe your neighborhood. Neighborhood was, uh, you know, lower middle class to middle middle class, if you will, you know, just regular people, you know, parents, typically employees, okay. um, kids, you know, playing all the time, stuff like that. So there's really not an affluent neighborhood at all, mm -hmm. but good school district, you know, good you know, always closer to good schools. That's it, it. You know, emphasis was always on education growing up. So, gotcha. um, do you remember the economy at that time? Yeah, I do. How was it? Extremely um, socialistic back in India. <laughs> uh, extremely, um, you know, controlled. Uh, everything was rationed. Just to give you an idea, even cement was rationed. Wow. If you can even fathom that, um, industries were not free. Um, you know every you know every single industry every single uh, sector in the economy was highly regulated mm. by the by the government um, which is why you know India in those days I'm talking nine, you know pretty much 80s late 80s ha second half of 80s um, uh, second half of second half of 80s began the process of uh, deregulation but uh, not until mid 90s did uh, the economy completely get deregulated and liberalization happened and all that and all the growth happened after that. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, were there, if there were, uh, what were the highlights of your school? Like um, your building, classroom, teacher or subjects offered? I went to a really good school. Um, they, you know, English medium, you know, a uh, lot of emphasis on uh, education, of course, getting good grades. But my parents were, thank God, you know, a little bit different. They really didn't care too much about the grades. They cared enough, but mm -hmm. they emphasized extracurricular activities. So, I went, you know, I played a lot of cricket um, and, you know, went to school, you know, music school uh, in the evenings and weekends. Oh, so what did you play? I learned uh, to play classical, Indian classical music okay. for nine years, yeah. Wow. Impressive. Um... So, apart, like, what were your main hobbies, your forms of entertainment, uh, sports? Uh, um, so didn't have too much TV growing up at all, but mainly 
yeah, sports and just hanging out with friends, you know, most of the time. Okay. Ma- mainly played cricket and badminton a little bit. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these next two or three questions will be about your jobs and professions, past yeah. and current. Uh, what jobs did you have throughout your life? I basically worked in the mechanical engineering field. I graduated as a mechanical engineer, so obviously stuck to that field for a little bit, then moved into IT. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked in the mechanical engineering field for, for about a year and moved into information technology because that's where the money was. You know, I had to reinvent my profession just because it was more um, uh, lucrative. Also, there were more opportunities to come to the US, which was my desire. That's true. So, yeah, so I pretty much worked in IT field for about 16 years now. Now, which one of those two jobs did you enjoy most? Neither. Neither. Uh, it's just a job. I, <laughs> I enjoy, you know, um, being an entrepreneur. I, I, you know, apart from my uh, jobs, I actually own a business. My wife and I both started a business about 10 years ago. Okay. And it's doing extremely well. And that's what I enjoy. I enjoy creating things, having no boss. So. Uh, did you attend, co- uh, attend college? Yes. Yes. And if so, what did you study? What was your primary? Mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering. Yeah. Okay. Now we're actually going to delve into the actual U.S. history part of this interview. Mm-hmm. Um, so I heard that you, uh, based on previous discussion, uh, you really admire and uh, talk about Abraham Lincoln, yeah. correct? So when you hear the name of this president, Abraham Lincoln, mm-hmm. what is the first thing that pops in your head? I would say courage, uh, integrity. Okay. I mean, are you looking for words or phrases or sentences or what uh, are you looking It's for? pretty open-ended, but if you're going to go with uh, courage and integrity, um, do you, how so? What, what, what provides that? I mean, pretty much, you know, everybody around him was against what he was going for, you yeah. know. Um, anybody, um, I mean, any, any lesser president, any lesser man would have, you know, would have definitely, I would say, uh, withdrawn. You know, from what he wanted to do, you know, Considering everything civil else war. Going exactly. I mean, the okay. number of people getting killed, you know, outrage, are, you know, around, um, you know, being too slow in the progress of the civil war, not being decisive. Uh, but he he kept, you know, he had integrity to his decisions. You know, he didn't uh, um, he didn't um, get uh, influenced by the negative influences of people around him. He so, knew what was true, and he st- stood true to it. I think. Okay. So is that what you most admire about him? Or Absolutely, is it, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, now, was there anything uh, that you disdained about this president? Do you think that there should have been something different that he should have done? Or do you think any negative any negative thoughts about him? No, I think given, given the time, um, the era that we were in, I mean, that's... It's very admirable what he accomplished, you know. He could have, I mean, looking back... Um, you know, maybe he could have sped things up uh, in integration of, you know, uh, African Americans, blacks. Uh, but I mean, how much can one one person do, right? Okay, that's, yeah, that's fair. Um, now, the overall influence of this president. Well, how would you describe that in words first, and maybe in uh, phrases, and like going into that? What what uh, what your basis of that words is? I'm sorry. You, um, w- describe the influence of Abraham. Lincoln. Influence, sure. Yes, yes. Um, influence, I would say, of course. I mean, there's many, many things, right? I mean, starting from Emancipation Proclamation, you mm-hmm. know, um, uh, you know, that's the that's the main thing. That you know, Civil War, handling of the Civil War, uh, you know, being, um, uh, I mean, having the having the courage to you know take the decision to. Um, go with the principle rather than what's popular you know obviously what was not it was not popular to um, do what he did uh, it would have been very easy you know a lesser man would have left the country uh, to split I think you know it's because of him that we have one country uh, the United States of America otherwise it would have been the South versus the North it would have been uh, like South Korea and North Korea would have had two countries by now yeah. if not for him if not for him so, uh, so obviously some key events are the Civil War. Mm-hmm. Um, apart from that, do you think there are any other distinctive highlights during his term or, and or of his time period? I mean, the fact that he was killed, you know, gives you an idea of how many enemies he had made. 
mm-hmm. um, and his his legacy also has been that I think he was the first president that really um, had uh, difference of opinion mm-hmm. with many many people in his um, uh, cabinet his, in his own cabinet he actually put together a team of rivals yes you know, yeah. as the book yeah. says uh, he put together a team of people that were had different you know different opinions than he had mm-hmm. but he still took the right decision you know he chose them for their ability not for their uh, he was not looking for a, uh, a, you know sycophants he was yeah. not looking for people that were after you know um, you know he took ability over perspective absolutely yeah okay. um, now if you don't mind could we delve into the civil war itself sure so there has been multiple debate multiple issues concerning how the civil war was actually sparked. Mm-hmm. Um, one one uh, fact people bring up is the election of the uh, election of Lincoln. Um, another one is slavery, um, and it, it is hard to believe that some people do not. Some people say that slavery was not the key factor. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is your thoughts? What are your thoughts about that? I mean, I, I wasn't there. <laughs> uh, okay. Neither was you know. I mean, you know, it's it's always going to be difficult to exactly pinpoint what happened, right? Okay. I don't think it's one factor. Mm-hmm. Maybe the tipping point was the election. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, I think it was building up. You know, it's not just, you know, the, all the South, uh, they didn't decide just because of one event. They didn't just, you know, decide to get together. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it was a tipping point. Okay. Um, I think um, also, uh, you know, Lincoln had this humor about him, you know, uh, I think even after or just before his election, you know, in the campaign and even after the election, mm-hmm. I think he was very, um, um, he had, he was sar- sarcastic in many of his comments. Um, are you referring to the Lincoln-Douglas debates or are you referring to... The debates, but even after the debates, right, you, you, his statements were very dismissive of uh, uh, the South, okay. you know. If I was in the South and if I was a hardline, you know, hardcore, um, you know, uh, Southerner, I would have definitely take uh, offense to the way Lincoln would uh, respond. You know, but it was very, uh, looking back, you know, the way he, um, uh, the way he would phrase sentences, the way he would uh, frame the sentences would be, uh, it, it was always, uh, uh, it always had a, uh, you know, a good humor in it. You know, sarcastic, but humor, um, and also very thoughtful. Okay. So. All right. Uh, well, that concludes our interview. Um, thank you for thank you for taking the time out of your thank you for offering your time for this interview, and um, I really appreciate it. And yeah, that'll be it.